Part B. Buddhism and Meditation. Chapter 30. The Miracle of Education. The spiritual path proceeds through the stripping away of all the inessentials in thought, word, and deed. As you might imagine, the practice of using fertilizer, appreciating the catalyst of daily life, and bringing all experience to the heart requires a quiet mind. We can hardly even identify our process when we're greatly upset. As my own path has developed over the years, the importance of staying centered on fundamental principles has become increasingly clear. I can see that the spiritual path requires us to strip away all the inessentials in thought, word, and deed. We ought to realize that there are primary teachings and there are secondary teachings, or what Ra sometimes referred to as transient information or spiritual trivia. Primary, essential teachings lead us to ever deeper self-integration, and they form the core of all mystic traditions. I recently read one of the classics of Buddhism in translation, a work called The Wisdom of the Early Buddhists by Geoffrey Parinder, a collection of the oldest Pali language scriptures from the time of Siddhartha Gautama, the man whom we call the Buddha. The more I read, the more I could appreciate the purity of his teachings, which are all by means called primary, and show us a true path, as opposed to much of what can be found today under the speckled New Age banner, these early teachings were all path-centered. The men and women who became monks and nuns around the Buddha were taught not to waste their time in either needless activity nor idle discussion. Their entire lives were spent in meditation and mind training. One passage in the book is particularly instructive, especially if we relate it to the current preoccupation of many with sensational UFO matters. This story sheds a clear light on what the Buddha himself deemed essential, more or less in his own words. Quote, The Buddha told Kevada, a householder, that there are three sorts of miracles. There is the miracle of mysteries, by which a man becomes invisible, passes through walls, or walks on water. But an unbeliever might do this by a magical charm, and because I see the danger of such miracles, I detest them. Then there is the miracle of secrets, by reading the hearts and minds of others and telling them what they're thinking. But this also might be done by a magical charm, and I detest it. Finally, there is the miracle of education, by which one hears the preaching of a Buddha, awakens to it, is disciplined in act and word and speech. One thus obtains joy and peace, realizes the Four Noble Truths, which is the reality of suffering, the cause of suffering, the end of suffering, and the way out of it, and the final assurance of the freedom of discipleship. This is the miracle of education. If we look deeper at this miracle of education, we can see exactly what path-centered means, holding firm to the primary teachings of enlightenment and transformation. If that is our aim, then we have to be strong and discerning and willing to put spiritual trivia in its place. To be sure, government schemes and UFO cover-ups, black budget technology and ET customs are interesting, but are they essential primary teachings? Do they lead to our liberation and freedom from needless suffering? Do they help us achieve self-integration, fusion with true self, and the flowers of love and wisdom? Of course not, and it's important to remember that. In this light, it's obvious that much of what we call cutting-edge UFO information and amazing psychic stories is secondary and concerns merely the first two minor miracles. Mere curiosity about alien magic, such as passing through walls or levitating or scanning thoughts, doesn't take us too far. Perhaps we should think more about the spiritual progress we might need to achieve these powers. Of course, to the Buddha and his students, these abilities were not considered a big deal. As all yogis know, they are simply byproducts of higher consciousness, just signposts along the way. The real question, as always, is simple. Is it essential or not? If our interests and studies lead us to greater joy, peace, clarity, and freedom from suffering, then they are quite worthy of our time and attention. If we subject all our current studies and sources of information to this standard, we will save a lot of time. More than that, we can also be sure then that our true spiritual path here is straight, centered, and grounded in the real. The entire teaching of the Buddha and all true masters has but one central goal, our freedom from ignorance and suffering.
and so we are told, quote, Whether wonders beyond the powers of ordinary men are performed or not, that is not the subject for which I teach the truth. The object of teaching the truth is to destroy ignorance in the one who practices it, end quote. In the next chapter, we'll take a closer look at the Buddhist path and the central practice of mindfulness, focused awareness to see things as they are and then going beyond all illusion.